What up, y'all? This is Will Crown back for episode number 20 of the Dad Also Show. Excited because that's kind of a big number for me, and also because of the fact today we're discussing pre-framing and how we can shape the way we see our life based on what we think. Pre-framing and how do you know about it? Let me break it down to you like this. Previously, I had a career in sales, and oftentimes we were taught different methods in order to help portray what we were trying to get across to the customer. There's a website out there, NASP, National Association of Sales Professionals. They say framing is the art of shaping the meaning of a situation, behavior, thought, word, or phrase. Pre-framing is Preframing is a very powerful tool that allows you to let someone know in advance what is going to happen and what they should make of it. If you've never done this, it's a very important skill set to learn. I can guarantee you, you've had it done on you. Ever been shopping for a car, condo, timeshare, insurance, <laughs> pretty much anything? You've heard the pitch. The key is for them to bring it up to you before you bring it up to them. I know you're a very well-informed, competent buyer, so I'm sure you're savvy enough to have checked online and noticed that our Honda is $10,000 more than a very similar Nissan just next door. Well, let me first start off by saying what they don't include for you is the service, the maintenance, the warranty, the customer service, the service department, the parts, let alone me, and you can't put a price on that, now can you? So if you look at it over the next five years, amortize over the next 60 months, you're actually paying less for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've all heard that logic, right? Hey, I get it. I've used it. But just like salespeople are good at pre-framing to the customer, we need to be good at pre-framing to ourselves, psychologically, how we view things. Quite simply, think of it like this. You got a picture frame, and inside that frame is what you actually view. So depending on how you build your frame determines what is actually seen in the end. Guys, the primary example of this that I want to talk to you about today because I really believe it will make the biggest impact on your life is that of nervousness and excitement. An article written by this guy named Mike Venny. He's a patient expert and the article was posted on healthcentral.com. Uh, talks all about anxiety and excitement and whether or not they're the same. To sum it all up in one paragraph, he says, Physiologically, anxiety and excitement are very similar. The difference is in our interpretation, framing. If we were stepping out onto the sports field for the game of our lives and the crowd was roaring and the music playing, that feeling would be invaluable. Enhanced vision, hearing, extra adrenaline for increased performance. It's exactly what you need at that moment. Listen to the sports star being interviewed after his debut game. So were you nervous, they asked? No, I was just super excited. Couldn't wait to get out there and help my team perform. Wow. Inside your body, the exact same thing is happening when you're nervous or you're excited. If you're going in for a big pitch with your business and you're talking to investors or you're going into an audition or, or you're going to propose or whatever it is, those nerves, adrenaline, and reactions happening within your body chemically, we have to channel what we're thinking about it to now say I'm excited versus I'm um, about to crap my pants. I heard about this last year and started studying it, so I put it to the test. For my wife's birthday, I took her skydiving. At first, I was cool. You know, we were sitting there waiting. They had a little bit of an extra weight, so it's all good, like taking it easy. I think we even drank a beer. And then we're getting a little bit closer to time, and they're gearing us up, and I'm like, huh, huh, th hmm, that's the plane. Yeah, I see people getting up in that plane, and then, huh, I guess, what? Well, that's right, we jump out. Oh, okay, okay. And then you're loaded on the plane, you're sitting in some dude's lap, you're getting ready to go down, and my heart's just like boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. I'm like thinking to myself, what am I doing here? What was I thinking? I could have taken her to Disneyland. And my wife seemed abnormally calm. And she's like, you good, honey? And I'm like, classic anxious white guy smile. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> So I decided to trick my mind. I had to just keep telling myself, you're so excited. I feel great. I'm excited. This is going to be great. I'm excited. I literally consciously had to change what I was saying to myself about the situation. And the more I did that, the more my nerves actually calmed down. And I did start to become excited about this. By the end of it, in my brain, I was like, well, whatever happens, happens. But this is going to be awesome. And I guarantee you it would not have been that way had I not started pre-framing the fact that I was about to jump out of an airplane. Who does that? This is probably a good place to end it, but I want you guys to know that I'm here for you. 
Like, comment, share. Let me know about the things that you deal with, anxiety, stresses, stuff that's going on in your life regarding your dad hustle, your family, home life, whatever's happening. We're here to build a community of support. Just know this, what you tell yourself in your mind has everything to do with what you actually feel in your body. So be honest and ask yourself, what's got me all worked up? Whatever it is, try employing the pre-frame. And I guarantee you, you're gonna perform your dad hustle at a higher level because you're excited and not nervous. As always, my name's Will Crown and I'm here to help you get to the next level in your dad hustle. Keep hustling, my friends. You can't stop me! Oh, that's all you got.